Welcome to The Real Scoop. I'm Jane Nielsen, your host and realtor at Pinnacle Residential Properties. I am here to give you the latest scoop on Wellesley Real Estate. This week, I am pleased to have Karen Mondell and Philippa Biggers of Wellesley Friendly Aid join us to talk about the Summer Camp Fund. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you, Jane. Jane. First, here are the real estate numbers. Since April 18th, 10 new single-family homes were added to the supply and 10 sold. There are now 132 homes remaining for sale. This was a pretty brisk week considering it was school vacation, Marathon Monday, and the beginning of Passover. The spring market is in full swing. Now, on to our guests. So, Karen and Philippa, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as you know, I'm a member of the Wellesley Service League, and one of the things we do at Wellesley Service League is support Wellesley Friendly Aid. We have an annual fundraiser where we, we raise money for the camp fund. So I thought it would be great for our viewers to hear more about the need and what exactly the camp fund is. And um, so Karen, could you give us a little background? So you're the program administrator at Wellesley Friendly Aid. I am. And I've been there for almost six years. And we do a lot of different programs at Friendly Aid. Camp Fund is just one of them. And, but that's where we have a lot of our focus right now because we have a community-wide appeal out there. We've sent letters to all the residents and many of the businesses seeking funds for our camp fund. Um, we provide financial assistance so children in low-income families in Wellesley can go to camp. And there are probably many more low-income families in Wellesley than people realize because, as you know, from being involved in Service League, there are families with children at Barton Road, and there are also a lot of families that live in affordable housing in other parts of Wellesley. We have almost as many children from families outside of public housing go to camp as kids who live in public housing. Wow. So last year, how many kids did you send to camp? We provide financial assistance for 63 kids last year to go to wow. camp. Most of them, well, the majority of them went to camps run by the Recreation Department, mm -hmm. and we have um, uh, a, an agreement with the Recreation Department that um, we split the cost so that if a child goes to the Recreation Department camp for eight weeks, we match up 50-50, so we pay for four weeks, they for, pay for four weeks. Likewise, if the child went for three weeks, I mean, for six weeks, we'd pay for three, they mm -hmm. would pay for three. Mm -hmm. um, children are also going to WINGS, which is the academic program for Wellesley Public Schools in the summer. And then there's a pause preschool that also has the session in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then we have some children going to other camps, uh, mostly day camps in various places. Um, and some are specialized, so some kids go to soccer camp or hockey camp, whereas other kids might go to uh, a music camp or just another general camp, like there's a Camp Chickamee that uh, is in Newton that's run by the YMCA. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the families to choose the camps that uh, their children would like to go to, and they fill out the application and provide the documentation to us. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that appealed the most to me about it is that we do give children the option of doing a specialty, so if they have mm -hmm. a particular interest, they can pursue that. and. I also remember when my own kids were little, what a struggle it is as a working mom to keep them actively involved, engaged, doing something the whole summer. And my own kids did go to town camp um, at different times. And it's a great program. They, mm -hmm. they can go swim at Morse's Pond. Um, it's, it's a full day, so it's, it's obviously many of your parents are both working parents. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, so Philippa, you are on the board of I Friendly am. Aid yep. for six or seven years, you said now? Um, six years. I think and it was six years. And you run the ESL program? I do. I run that. Um, so we, I started that just about the same time as I came on the board. Um, and I'm involved with other things at Wellesley Friendly Aid, including I'm on the camp committee, and I've been on it for about three years. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the process which of reviewing the kids, the applications okay. that come in. Well, um, we get an application from all the kids. Karen's actually done a quite a bit of the review already. Um, we um, go on the criteria of, uh, well, it's for low income people, with students, um, and we use the fuel assistance um, cutoffs for determining whether a family qualifies for help. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, we collect W-2s and so forth just to truly document that they are in fact low income and um, we also, they have to be Wellesley residents. So the program is for Wellesley families that are from Wellesley and um, we document that they're low income. And for um, the children can be any, as young as preschool and as old as? Eighth grade. Eighth, eighth grade, okay. Yeah. And so there are a variety of different programs uh, available for them. And so far, because of the generous support of people in the town, if they qualify in the last few years, we've actually been able to offer them some, some camp, um, mm -hmm. amount of camp. Um, and you know, when you were mentioning how, how, how it was, it's challenging if you're working um, to, to work out what the kids should do in the summer, uh, for people that really don't have means, mm -hmm. um, the other option often is watching TV, video, sitting around feeling miserable, none of which you really want your kids to go through. So, um, you know, you, not only is this a great opportunity for them, but you have to think what would they be doing otherwise, mm -hmm. which really isn't great at all. Um, so it's very interesting looking at the applications. It's quite an eye-opener. Um, mm -hmm. People, as Karen was mentioning, you know, every town in Massachusetts has to have affordable housing. So we have people of low income, just like all towns do. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, um, you know, it, this is a neighbor helping neighbor program, but often you really, in this day and age, don't know what's going on in your neighbor's home. Mm -hmm. There are crises they may be facing. And it seems to me that financial crises really come from three distinct areas. Either it's a medical situation, mm -hmm. either long term or, a, or emergency, both. Um, it's change in, in marital status can really throw a family into economic turmoil. Mm -hmm. And uh, change in job, either losing a job or having the num uh, hours drastically cut back. And that happens to many people, one of mm -hmm. the three. And so it is an eye open. It really is interesting to see this. It's utterly, completely confidential, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to um, just express to the general pop population that this is available for people, mm -hmm. um, that it is really for anybody who is in the circumstances where they need a little extra help right now and they, and they do, in fact, qualify. So. OK, terrific. So um, do you have? Um uh, any success stories or anecdotally can you tell us not with any yeah. private information about a family that a couple kids have gone or what kind of things they participated in? Well, this is the, the meant to what was written in the new the letter. We could possibly read that. Is mm -hmm. it, that's okay? Sure. That's, Absolutely. It was uh, it says I'm a single mother who works full time to put food on the table for my two children. Um, I cannot afford to put them in camp. Having them in camp gives me peace of mind while I am working. I know they are safe and having fun. Otherwise, they'd be sitting in front of the TV as I have no other options. So that's pretty well what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. But um, you may have any, anything else you might want to share. Or how do, how do people find out about it? Um, that's a good question. That, because I know, and I know we're actually technically past the application date if somebody wanted to have put an application in. But Karen, you, you were gen kind enough to say that you're still would take an application right. if someone found you. Right. So, so how do people find out about it, or participants? Well, for the people who live in public housing, I mean, there are families who have known about it for years because they've had children who have gone through. And then, you know, they talk to their neighbors, and that's how folks find out about it. And then we always give the information to the resident coordinator at Barton Road, and he mm -hmm. puts it in the tenant newsletter. That's Gary. Gary, yes. yeah, we okay. put it in at least two months in a row, mm -hmm. so people know about it. And I contact all the guidance counselors and the social worker in the Wellesley schools mm -hmm. to let them know, and at the middle school. And so we just try to put the word out in, in as many places as we can so that uh, we pick up any, especially new families mm -hmm. to Wellesley who aren't aware of this. And like I just had you know, someone come in a couple of weeks ago who just moved to Wellesley and found out about it mm -hmm. and applied. So that's going to happen also. But it's always a challenge to it get the true. word out mm -hmm. to people and uh, make sure they know what resources there are in town. Mm -hmm. Right. And then your fundraising. So I know a service league is every year commits to, to mm -hmm. contributing a certain amount. And I'm sure you, I know that the rec department is doing their own um, outreach. So mm -hmm. people might actually be asked to donate from either Friendly Aid or 
or the um, rec department? Well, right? we're working hand in hand with the rec department okay. this year mm -hmm. because their costs went up at camp, which is not unusual. Camps are going up in price, and we're both looking at the cost and you know how much uh, can we afford in our budgets for camp, both rec department and for us. So, you know, one of the things we're trying to do is work together to to fundraise. So. They um, are including some of our materials in their email blasts that they send out. They just mm -hmm. sent one out on Saturday, just kind of to raise the profile for mm -hmm. people who may be sending their kids to camp or participating in other activities to let them know, you know, what else is going on. And then there's a need for some kids whose families just can't sign them up. One, two, three, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have what it takes um, money-wise mm -hmm. to pay for camp. So. We've, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've um, reached out to residents and businesses in the town. We've got a nice big sign on our lawn. Mm -hmm. on Couple our people face. mentioned that to me, yes, which is nice. Yes. yes, Our, you know, I try to broadcast on our Facebook page mm -hmm. and on our website. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, we're very, very grateful to uh, folks who have been supporting the program for a number of years now. I mean. Uh, Service League has been a fantastic supporter. It's just uh, really terrific to have the group mm -hmm. um, raising the money and supporting us in that major way. Yes, we're having an event Friday night, so oh, that's oh, our good, campfire. Good, good, yeah, Which will be fun. And, and don't we have a matching person? Or Yes, we, I was just going to mention oh. that we also have um, a couple of other local community groups who have been kind enough to support us year after year. There's a house and garden club. Mm -hmm. um, there's the village church women of the village congregational church, and um, some other organizations. You know, from time to time that donate, and we're very, very grateful mm -hmm. because it really does add up. And then we, for the second year in a row, we have an anonymous donor who will match funds that we raise. Wow. Um, if we hit 10,000. If we hit 10,000. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. And we, we hit it last year, which was terrific. So we're hoping to this year. Yeah. And are you able to um, meet the needs of all of the applicants, or do have you had to turn people away? Lately, we haven't. I don't know if at any point we... I'm not aware of us yeah. ever mm -hmm. having to turn away an eligible child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also want to point out that this program has been going on since the 1940s. Wow. Since the 1940s, Friendly Aid's been sending kids to camp, providing financial assistance mm -hmm. so kids can go to camp. Mm -hmm. I think some years it's varied what we could do. Right. We might be able to do one less week or mm -hmm. whatever, but mm -hmm. we always provided something. Something. And there's yeah. also a cap, I should ask, on the private ones, which cost more money, so mm -hmm. that they're an equal, where well, you can explain right. the non, more detail. For the camps that are not either the rec department or run through the Wellesley schools. Mm -hmm. We give them a set amount of money. They all get the same amount that they can apply towards those other camps, whether it's the sports camps right. or the music camp or just the other general day camp. Uh -huh. So they all get the same and they can apply that to their bill. So they can choose what type of camp and, mm -hmm. and make that decision. It might be a week less or something if they go to an outside camp. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them choice. will get also get scholarships from that camp. So between oh, nice. the scholarship from that camp and what we give them, it it usually covers. So the do cost. they do they find out about the scholarship through you too? Is that how they're learning about the scholarship or well, at no, a particular camp you, or when you apply? Well, they you? they usually contact the camp because uh -huh. one of the things we require requires part of the application is the registration form from the camp mm -hmm. just to show that yes they are registered as a camp they'll be going to camp so um, they contact the camp to tell them that they're applying for a scholarship from us mm -hmm. and then I'm usually in touch with someone at the camp if we right. need to iron out the logistics mm -hmm. but it wouldn't you know it would it be done with them it's not a duplication or anything right right so. but that's a that's a nice opportunity oh yeah good yeah so how many people are on the board that, that makes a decision? I'm well, trying to count around the table. I think it was <laughs> six, was it? Six people, the chairperson, which I'm not. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then I think there were there's six on, on the um, on the camp committee. And it's And it's it includes a member of a service league, because we always yes. have a service league representative on our board. Yeah. The service mm -hmm. league's such an important part mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that that person also sits on the camp committee. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. your involvement. Yes, that's great. Good. So, how many children do you think we'll be sending to camp this year so far? Well, so far, we have approved applications for 49 kids, mm -hmm. and we still have 16 in the pipeline. 
so that those are applications where I'm still waiting for some documentation. Mm -hmm. Or uh, like wings and paws for the school, that application pro registration process is a little bit later than the rec department. Right. So, you know, at the time of our last meeting, I hadn't gotten those registration forms in yet. But I would expect that most of those in the pipeline will be reviewed and a decision will be made. So that comes out to, if I did it right, uh, 65 applications that we'll be getting this year. Terrific. And last year we got 66. Ah, so pretty, so pretty similar. Pretty similar, although, you know, I, it's not surprising to see an application or two coming in mm -hmm. during my, May mm -hmm. for whatever reason. New people move to town. Mm -hmm. And something. WINGS, for those who aren't familiar with WINGS, that's another terrific Wellesley program okay. that is for K through three. I rec is that, no, I is think that it's through five. It is through five. Mm -hmm. So I know they have it at Sprague, and it's part educational and part fun. Right. Um, so I know that pause, some pause kids continue there through the summer. I think some um, they have a. It's an integrated program like pause, right? And it's and I always liked it because it was a little bit of fun and a little bit of education. Right. You didn't have to do all English and math problems, but <laughs> right. But, as I understand it, because I've seen the registration forms and help parents look at it, in the morning you choose what uh, classes you want your child to take, and mm -hmm. it's an assortment of English and math classes depending on the grade. In the afternoon it's all fun, yep. elective classes. Yeah, I definitely remember my kids going out to look at bugs in the yard with one of the mm -hmm. Sprague's teachers. And the other great thing about PAWS and WINGS is that it's our public school teachers are the educators were fantastic so that's that was yeah. a great program you know I think it almost goes without saying but as we all know this is a pretty affluent town and I think if you are in a family that is struggling financially um, it's sort of in your face what other people have mm -hmm. um, exotic vacations or um, vacation homes luxuries yep. of what of any kind so uh, it's just awfully nice to be able to provide just things that we just feel like we we want to be able to pride our own kids and mm -hmm. to give them similar opportunities at least to some degree to make it more of an even playing field mm -hmm. so I think it's a I think it truly and friendly aid in general but in this program in particular is is a really wonderful um, asset to the community mm -hmm. so. well good well I hope that if people have an, an interest in supporting you we have our information here if you'd like to make a donation to the Wellesley Friendly Aid Summer Camp Fund, please go to wellesleyfriendlyaid.org. And also there was a fabulous article in the Wellesley Weston Magazine in the fall of 2015 that goes into great detail about all of the things that Wellesley Friendly Aid does. So we welcome you to support the, the camp fund. So thank you, ladies, thank for coming you. today. It was thank a, you. Delighted. Thank nice you. Nice to hear about the, such a great program, and it does make me feel good to be part of Service League and to know that we're, we're helping people in our community who a lot of people don't know need that help. Exactly. So thank and, you. And thank if you. I can just add one thing, and that is the parents are really, really appreciative and very, very grateful for getting this support because many of them know they couldn't do it without this financial mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. and they don't take it for granted. Well, that's good to hear, too. Thank you. Okay. So thanks for joining us at The Real Scoop. If you have a suggestion about a future guest or a Wellesley event you would like to promote, please give me a call at 781-223-7338 or visit my website at janenielsen.com. You can also contact me to hear about how the real estate market impacts the value of your home. See you next time.